So I was on call about two years ago, and my pager sounded, and it told me to respond to a medical emergency. So my partner and I got into our ambulance, we're uh, EMTs, and we went over to the location we were told to go. And uh, we got there, and I went inside the house, and I found my friend's mother sitting uh, on the couch. And I asked her, what's wrong? And she said, hmm, I'm not feeling well. Uh, I'm nauseous, my, my stomach hurts, I, I vomited a couple of times, and uh, I just have a bad feeling about this. I think something's wrong. And I said, okay, these are, these are fairly common uh, symptoms. Uh, but I'll, I'll double check, I'll take a very basic set of vital signs to make sure that you are in fact stable, and I found that she, she appeared to be. She wanted to go to the hospital anyway, so uh, we, we took a nice quiet ride over uh, and didn't really treat her much on the way because, again, we didn't really think much was wrong. And uh, when we got to the ER, it was a really quiet night, so she immediately got a bed in a room and a nurse came right in to treat her, and she started the ER standard workup, which included an EKG. An EKG is essentially a series of pictures of the heart's electrical system, and when the nurse had finished acquiring it, it stared us both in the eye. My friend's mother, my patient, was having a silent heart attack, called silent because there is no symptom of crushing chest pain. When we think chest, we think heart, and when we think heart, we think chest because it's the simplest association we can make. It's geographical, and in that sense, I failed. I'd failed to communicate. I'd failed to appreciate because one single symptom wasn't there. So, what does this mean? Well, interestingly enough, uh, one of the, the most accurate predicting symptoms of heart attack is that impending sense of doom, knowing something was wrong. So my inability to communicate essentially put her life in danger. Um, now, how do, we, how do we make this communication better? Well, first of all, I had to make amends with, with my own, with my own feel, uh, with my own uh, mess ups, and I had to, uh, well, I had, to, I had to make amends with my friend's mother. She's totally fine, by the way, and I also had to make a, <laughs> and, and my friend is still my friend, but, uh, but I had to, I had to, I, I decided I had to make a way to communicate better. And so I had to make amends with my failures. I had to make amends with those mistakes and turn them into lessons that would help people before they could become regrets. And so I decided I was going to take the engineering education that I'm getting and, and apply it to that. And so I, uh, I took, I got some books and I learned all about silent diseases and silent symptoms. And I, I went to, to the student lab at Cooper Union and I began learning about these diseases and I began prototyping and designing and actually making devices that would enable the body to communicate with its owners, to communicate with humans. And I was conquering my past failures. I was actually making devices that would enable the humans to, that would enable humans to communicate with bodies and vice versa and hopefully unmask some of the secrets of the body so, so desperately tried to hide from us. But on the road there, I, uh, I learned a much more humbling lesson than, than uh, I had accomplished when I was conquering. That was the following. You see, when I was, uh, when I was doing all this research and designing and prototyping, I, I had to learn an awful lot about, the, uh, about, the, about cardiac drugs and, and about the heart. And I found in my research that there is not a single drug you can give to a patient who has a cardiac arrest in the field. Now, cardiac arrest, by the way, is not the same as, uh, as heart attack, but it can be a consequence of it. There's not a single drug you can give to, to a patient who has one of these in the field that increases their chances of actually walking out of the hospital alive. And I was shocked because I, I was under the impression that medicine was more advanced than this. The best any of these drugs can do is give the patient a few more hours in the ICU before he or she expires. And I said, what a, what a failure. And I got, I got very disillusioned with the practice of medicine. And so I complained. I complained to uh, a friend, a mentor, an incredible medical scholar, uh, Dave Berman, who, uh, who said to me, no, that's not a failure. That's a total success. Because what if those last few hours in the ICU is what provides just enough time for a last goodbye, or for a last I'm sorry, or for a last I love you, or I love your imperfections, or son, keep swinging for the fences. Now, appreciating that is not is not finding the silver lining or the solace in what is otherwise a total failure to resuscitate patients. It is a completely independent success because communication as, as it is, is the very, very basis of, uh, of, our, of our lives as human beings. How many of us have had a last conversation and how much better is our relationship with those who, no, who are no longer with us because of it? Or better yet, how many of us didn't have the opportunity to have a last conversation? What would we give today to have had that? Again, communications is, is the very mortar end and material of what our relationships as human beings are made of. And so we need to, whether we are, whether it's as, 
as humans, as just people, or it's as healthcare professionals, or it's as scientists. We need to perfect the way we communicate. We need to transcend just the five senses of seeing. We need to understand people. Because as my friend's mother can attest to, the stakes are high. Uh, and, and we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the people who love and care about us. And I owe it to my patients, and you owe it to your patients, to, to transcend that, that five senses level of communications. Because our relationships depend on it. Because our lives depend on it. And I hope I've convinced you that those two are exactly one and the same. Thank you.